Like everything I've been through, everything I, I've seen in my life, like I don't know, uh, a lot of my influences came from my, my hood. Uh, a lot of the things that I had to go through, I had to go through sitting in my hood. I was broke, now I'm rich, these niggas. You got the album out, please excuse me for being anti-social. Now, I don't like interviewing anti-social people. Now, you got to talk. Yeah, no, nah, we going to talk. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to talk. Yeah. I just don't like to, per se. I just nah, don't like to talk. it ain't even that. It just I, That was a statement from people who don't know me. So if you've listened to any music this year, I'm almost certain you've heard that line. The Box is the second track on Roddy Rich's debut album, Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial, which was released December the 6th, 2019. There's no doubt that The Box is Roddy Rich's biggest song so far, spending 11 weeks at the top of the US Billboard and racking in over 600 million streams on Spotify. The song is also five times platinum in the US and gold in the UK. In late February, the music video was released and produced by the man himself. Just like the song and all of the other music videos he'd produced, it is incredible. Not only are his music videos incredible, Roddy Rich is at the top of the game musically. Despite him becoming a lot more mainstream recently, he has been one of Unknown Productions' favourite artists for a significant amount of time. We have both listened to Roddy for a very long time and love all of his projects and singles. Personally, I think he is the best rapper out there currently, and this video is going to explain why. But first, let's take it right back to the start. I feel like I want my legacy to be someone who always remain the same but leveled up. I do want to become a legend, a, a great, somebody who broke boundaries, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who just rose above everything. Roger Wayne Moore Jr. was born on October the 22nd, 1998 in Compton, California. Of course, like all great artists, Roddy Rich was born with musical talent and interest. As young as eight years old, he started rapping and singing. One thing you definitely can't doubt is his pure talent, and not just lyrically. Unlike a lot of rappers, this guy can genuinely really, really sing. This is demonstrated in many live performances, which we're going to get onto later. Not only did he possess musical talent, he also had a passion for basketball. During his high school years, he played it regularly and claims that he was a good level player. However, it is clear to see that he has significantly more talent in music. He made beats and started recording music more seriously when he was just 16 years old. So as we earlier mentioned, Roderick Moore grew up in Compton. As I'm sure a lot of you know, Compton could definitely be considered one of the homes of rap. And there's certainly been a vast amount of musical talent that has emerged from that area. But another thing that's no secret about Compton is the gang violence and association with that city. Still to this day, Compton is considered one of the most dangerous cities in California. And despite it being a much safer place than it was in the 80s and 90s, it's still only safer than 8% of US cities, and it's still home to both the Bloods and the Crips. The new mayor elected in 2013 did help with some of the turf war between the gang. However, I don't think even God himself could stop them two wanting war. I'm sure it comes to no surprise when I say that growing up in this area, Roderick Moore was pretty much instantly invited to that sort of lifestyle. Like most young kids looking for a sense of purpose, some cash, and a sense of security and safety, he automatically took the offer. As early as a teenager, Roderick was a member of the Southside Compton Crips gang. He spent a lot of his time gangbanging and running from the law. I mean, is this, uh, uh, is this blood or crip area? It's crip. Okay. You, uh, did you grow up gang related or? Yeah. Yeah? Crip. Can you, you want to talk about like how old did you, did you start gangbanging? Yeah, I mean, young nigga. I, I was like running around with all the crips, like all my cousins, like all my family, like crips. 
Mm -hmm. And I got older, like I jumped off the porch. I, I, got, I got kicked out my mom when I was, when I was like, like 15, 16, so yeah. then I started like getting in the street for real. Yeah. You know, like, so 15, 16, you start coming around this area? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I've always been over here though. My, my grandparents live in the farm. Yeah. So like we was back and forth. My, my other, my cousin lived in, 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 in um, and nutty block yeah. so it like it, it was all right here all the time yeah i could tell like just by like being around you like you you got your head on straight though yeah, yeah. i just you know what i'm saying people say i live before type shit yeah like, nigga just be, you know what I'm saying? yeah yeah, like I just think ahead, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's openly mentioned that he needed to look after himself. He needed to fend for himself and make his own money. So like a lot of lads in these very tough areas, he took to gang crime, gang violence and robberies. It's also common knowledge that Roderick was involved in the selling of drugs, which he does mention in the XL Freshman Freestyle. I'm in the penthouse with the dirty money trying to wash it up. Back at Granny House, we were serving junkies trying to run it up. This like gang lifestyle and being around such dangerous people massively influenced him later on in his life in his music, but also his public persona and personality, which again, we'll get to later. Despite the details of Roddy's first arrest being virtually non-existent, we do know that he spent a week in jail for suspected gun charges. During that week, he decided that this lifestyle wasn't the right path for him. Rich didn't want to be stuck in jail and going around in circles for bullshit that he didn't need and wanted to head down a more legitimate Route. This was a huge turning point in his life and pushed him to start his career in music and turn his attention away from street violence. So how did the music journey begin? So who taught you that shit? Who taught you how to go in there and spit bars here? You gotta be a 16, you gotta do the books, <laughs> all that shit. Uh, my uncles, like back in the day, like mm -hmm. when I was um, probably like eight or young, like I, I used to uh, press record for them niggas. So like they used to be just in the kitchen, just, you feel me, like, Rapping, going back and forth, whatever. And I was just a young nigga around. I used to just press record on the Pro Tools. As I mentioned earlier, Roddy Rich began rapping and singing as young as eight years old. And he picked up the basics of songwriting and putting lyrics together from listening to his uncles do it at home. And this is where he got the basics for not only how to put songs together, but also recording softwares and how to record music. This proves that Rich is clearly an intelligent guy that easily picks up new skills and is influenced by the world around him. And this is how he would eventually go on to make some of the best rap music to date. At around 14 years old, Rich bumped into Kendrick Lamar on the streets of Compton. Apparently he rapped a few verses in front of him and Kendrick instantly saw the potential. He told him he could really get somewhere and that he should keep pursuing this. And even Kendrick, I, I bet he didn't know how far he could take this. Yeah, Kendrick was, was a, a real big inspiration for me. Just because we had a cool conversation don't mean I'm about to believe, you know, like I could be that because nigga you probably put in a million hours you feel mm -hmm. me yeah. i ain't put in you feel me so i'm just like all right for sure but as i got older and i just been going through all this shit and just really just making it mm -hmm. after doing that and seeing and just reuniting and seeing him again it was love like it was only two or three years ago that rich started taking music seriously by releasing his first ever set of songs on a full mixtape feed the streets there isn't many rappers out there with a first project as polished as this. We wouldn't blame you for thinking he had released music before because his entry standards were abnormally high. Feed the Streets was released on the 22nd of November 2017. It was a long mixtape with 17 songs on the project. The first song on this mixtape is Fuck It Up, which is 100% my favourite track from this tape. This was the first song I actually heard from Roddy Rich, and it's fair to say that it got me hooked. And he goes crazy on this song with his flow. I just trying to run a cake up, Versace sheets just to make love, got a private just to make drugs. From the first song on the tape, all the way to the last, Free Game is absolutely incredible. In particular, I love the lyrics on this song, and it mostly talks about his gang lifestyle and growing up in the hood. I was a nigga, I was whipping on the stove. 16 years old, I was kicking in them doors. All of these stories that Roddy Rich has that he puts into his music are what makes his songs so good, in my opinion. Another song that draws me back to this project regularly is Chase the Back. The wordplay, mixed with the flow, is what makes this song incredible and demonstrates his pure lyrical ability. You ain't got the dirty, I get my man 50, get hollows ripping through your chest. The song Uber is one that I will always go back to. For me, it's the chorus. The main chorus and hook in that song, the flow is just incredible. And like all of his songs, the wordplay is incredible and it's very catchy. IPhone, make a money moves, yeah, you know I'm trying to make a meal, baby. One song off this project that I'm not really that fond of is Plotting featuring Go Get a KB. Even Roddy's verse doesn't cover up how bad the feature sounds. This is rare because the rest of the mixtape is such high level for a first release of your career. For me, one of the only weaker songs on this album is Baby Boy. Now trust me, Roddy Rich doesn't make bad music. And this song isn't bad, it's just 
a bit boring compared to the other songs on the album, in my opinion. Overall, as we keep saying, this is an incredibly strong first project. There's basically no bad songs and he carries this theme throughout his career. The tape gained him his original core fan base and instant respect from other massive artists. About five months later, Rich released a four song EP only on SoundCloud called Before the Fame. To be honest, I, I've got no idea why he did this <laughs> and I've got no idea why it wasn't fully released on all platforms. Because like all his music, the music on this EP is really high quality and really good stuff. And a lot of you probably haven't heard this because it's only on SoundCloud. So feel free to go and check it out if you can be asked with fucking SoundCloud. <laughs> Alright, so this next song, I wouldn't I wouldn't be standing before you if I never made this first, this song right here. This song hold a um a very uh important place in my heart because I lost a lot of homies in the streets, not even just to gang violence, but just to the streets, man. I lost my best friend to a high speed chase. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't trying to die young, so I gotta ride with one. Stud ten toes down in my Balenciaga. In July 2018. Rich released the single Die Young. This song broke him out from his core fan base, hitting numbers over 100 million, and secured him a genius interview and a live session. X had died that day. It was um, the night he passed away. I just was in a mode where it was like, you know, a lot of young people dying. They like legends, you know. Speaker knockers, Lil Snoop. You know, it's a lot of people that was great that died at a young age, so I wanted to make something in remembrance of them, but at the same time just, making people well aware of what, you know, what's been going on. This song wasn't just a hit numbers wise, this song hit close to home with a lot of people. Rich wrote this song due to the amount of young rappers that were dying at this time, but obviously it was particularly triggered by the death of X. Not only was it a tribute to those that we have lost in the game, it was also a way of saying that, you know, he hopes he doesn't want to go this way and that he's going to do everything he can to not go that way. I ain't trying to die young, so I got to ride with one. Every young nigga in the hood or in the streets, just period, they, that's they feeling every day. Like they be like, is this my last day? Or like, like it's a it's a weird kind of feeling. But when you in the streets and when you in the, like, you know, when you grew up like that, it's just a certain type of mindset you got. It's kind of survival, it's not just living. This song now has another meaning to Roddy personally, due to the passing of one of his childhood friends to a high speed chase. This is another factor that has changed his general persona over time. This is one of the songs he famously performed in the live orchestra session, and you can see how much it means to him from this clip. Tell me why the legends always gotta. I appreciate y'all. These losses that Roddy has suffered have taken a massive toll on his outlook in life. And he's previously mentioned that he's got a constant fear in his life of something going drastically wrong due to the area he's come from. And also the fact that so much good has come to the guy since he's been making music. He's almost sitting there thinking, well, when's the bad coming then? I, it's a feeling I have. It's a feeling that a lot of people that come from where I come from have. And you feel like you're getting so much good. Where, when is the bad going to come? Mm -hmm. Nigga, welcome to my life. This is something that we've heard rappers talk about before in the past and is the reason why some mental people think that X knew he was going to die. A month later, another single, Rich Forever, was released. Due to the track not being on the album and later being taken down, it's easy to forget about this song. Thankfully, you can still find it on YouTube and we're up for starting a petition to get that incredible song back on streaming services. I just love my dog. Yeah. Nigga, my brother told me how to taste the best. Another rapper who's helped Roddy Rich along the way is Meek Mill. In October 2018, Meek brought him out at a powerhouse concert and a month later featured him on his album Champions, which was a massive. Also, in November of the same year, Roddy Rich's second mixtape, Feed the Streets 2, was released, 
featuring the singles Die Young and Every Season. And what a fucking song that is. Every Season is absolutely incredible and is one of my all time favorite Roddy Rich songs. This song does not stop from the start and all the way till the end. It's got one of the best flows I've ever heard in any song and some of the best wordplay in typical Roddy Rich fashion. Throughout the whole track, it's got incredible one-liners and the beat is really cool too. Another well-known classic song from this tape is Down Below. Roddy mainly raps about his come up from the projects in Compton. This is definitely one of my favorite all-time songs from him. And the main reason I connect with this song is because he talks about his past in an emotional sense. And this grabs me more than a typical song that bangs in the charts just because it's catchy. Rich also performed Down Below with a live orchestra, which adds to the emotion of the song. Them cold nights, I was sleeping on the floor, yeah. You'll notice that a lot of Roddy's music does follow the same style and flow. And although some people can see this as a bad thing, in this case, it's definitely not because that style and that flow is so distinctive and so good, it just doesn't matter. Although saying that, the song NASCAR does actually feature a slightly different style of flow. It's a little bit faster and a little bit more consistent but it really really works and it's definitely one of my favourite songs on this whole project. The song Can't Express is an emotional type of song where Roddy raps about loyalty and staying real. It is one of the strongest songs on this project and connects with me as these types of songs are what I enjoy the most. In my opinion, this mixtape shows a big jump in Roddy's ability. Many of the songs are a lot more diverse than the first tape and technically speaking, this project is miles ahead of the last. Personally, I believe that this tape was a very good follow-up to the first version and as Adam said, demonstrates a slight change in style and has a more versatile feel to the project more so than Feed the Streets 1. And for his career in general, this tape massively upped the game. Songs like Die Young, Every Season and Down Below introduced him to a much wider audience. However, at this point, he's still nowhere near the star that we know today. In December 2018, Roddy's second introduction into the mainstream came about as he featured on massive producer Marshmallow's Project Dreams. This song gained him even further recognition due to the song being played on mainstream radio and the collaboration with Marshmallow brought in new fans to Roddy's music. From one of the softest, most upbeat songs that Roddy's ever been on, with a guy who's literally got a big fluffy fucking marshmallow on his head, <laughs> to one of his hardest tracks of all time. May 2019 brought out the mud, which is not only just a straight banger musically, it's got more explicit words than most of the songs in the world. I just put my middle finger up, fuck a fuck nigga. In between that time, Roddy was introduced to the UK audience with the song How It Is, thanks to the features Chip and Young Bane. It's slightly different to the typical songs that Rich releases, but a new style is welcomed every once in a while as he continues to show great versatility. Now you may have noticed a very, very big song we missed from that time, Racks in the Middle. We left that for a reason because this song is so significant and it brings us on to the next part. Thousands of fans of Grammy-nominated rapper and community activist Nipsey Hussle are in a state of shock today. They are mourning the hip-hop star's ultimately and violent death. Uh, Nipsey Hussle was murdered in broad daylight outside a clothing store that he owned in South Los Angeles. And he was killed just before he was about to meet with city leaders and the LAPD about reducing gang violence. He is someone who put our community on the map. Um, people thought that our community was just about violence. Um, and Nipsey put a change to that and he let them know that even though we're from uh, underprivileged communities of poverty, that we can still become something. So his death just hit you different. Yeah, because I, I like, I, first of all, I wasn't in my city. That was one thing that I was just, it was like, damn, I wasn't even home. You feel me? And it's like, it just is crazy, you know. On March 31st, 2019, legendary rapper Nipsey Hussle sadly passed away at the age of 33. He was considered one of the OGs and was hugely respected by other rappers in the game. But one rapper who especially respected him and one rapper he had a special relationship with 
was Roddy Rich. Roddy never stops talking about how Nipsey Hussle is his biggest inspiration and definitely his biggest role model when it comes to the rap game but also just life in general. They were friends long before Roderick Moore became Roddy Rich, and there is no doubt that the death of Nipsey Hussle hit him very hard. Despite the whole situation being incredibly upsetting, Roddy always says that he felt honoured and grateful to have shared the time with Nipsey making that song. It's one of his proudest moments in his career, growing up idolising him to making a hit song with him. The song Racks in the Middle will not only have a very high sentimental value to Rich, but he can also be proud that it is genuinely one of his best pieces of work. The two collaborated and complemented each other absolutely perfectly. By mid-2019, Roddy Rich was a much more household name and much more mainstream. And this was just taken further with another mainstream hit, Ballin'. Ballin' was Rich's first collaboration with DJ Mustard off the producer's third studio album. It's an incredible song, and by the title you can guess that it's about being rich. The song was released in the summer and it fits in with that time of year. And this track is what gave the documentary its name from this famous line. I was broke, now I'm rich, these niggas salty. You can't be mad at me because I, I've been, I've been chasing this shit. I've been chasing my lifestyle right now. Like I've been chasing what I, what I knew I was going to be. Flying PJ, doing everything a nigga really want to do. Having that, having that jury in a tuck in a vault, having that money. Like I've been, I've been waking up to do this. So after a few lead singles in December, 2019, Rich released his debut album, Please Excuse Me, for being antisocial. The album starts off with intro, which just sets the tone for the rest of the album. The way that that song starts off quite deep and slow paced, and then the pace of the beat switches is just absolutely incredible. Go and have a listen to the live orchestra session and you can see this talent for yourself. Next up is the famous one. Now I can see out of all of the songs why this was the one that banked. Don't get me wrong, it's not my favorite. I don't think it's one of the best personally, but it has got that just catchy feeling to it. You can tell that it was made with radio in mind. Like it just is one of them songs. Third on the album is Start With Me. This song's a bit more classic Roddy Rich and features a quality feature artist in Gunner. Although this song isn't one of my favourites, Roddy still demonstrates his powerful wordplay and impressive flow. Although Perfect Time is just such an amazing song, one thing I will say though, he should have used the live version of that song on the album. It's so much better. Take a listen. But it's still a great song. Uh, it's very catchy, like a lot of the songs on this album, and it shows his diversity. Like a lot of songs on this album, Moonwalking featuring Lil Durk is different to the typical Roddy Rich song. For me, Lil Durk is a brilliant feature, and his verse is very good on this song. I love the part where Durk starts his verse and then pauses and then carries on. What a masterpiece. And now we have The Goat. Big Stepper is definitely one of my favorite songs of all time and is 100% my favorite Roddy Rich song. When this track dropped as a single, I just knew the upcoming album was gonna be fire. I'll never forget the first time I listened to this song. Like, it actually blew me away. It's hard as fuck and the beat is so cool and different. You could say this about nearly every Roddy Rich song, but the lyrics on this song are so good, nearly every line could be used as an Instagram caption, like it's so sick. Murder, murder, murder. God's Eyes is the seventh track on this unbelievable album. Rich raps about the fact that just because he has money, it doesn't make you automatically happy. Roddy talks about this in the live orchestra session, referring to his friend that died. To the streets, man, I lost my best friend to a high speed chase. A lot of people don't know that about me, you feel me? But when I got rich, that was like the first thing that ever happened to me. So that shit scarred me because I thought, you know, like when you get money, shit, your life be like the best. But it was just crazy, like going state to state and like really wanting to call one of my best friends, I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? So that shit really, really took a toll on me. Peter with Meek Mill is, it's gotta be one of my least favorite songs on the album. Although it is growing on me and the song is still a great song and Roddy Rich's part is brilliant. I'm just not a huge Meek Mill fan. I don't know why, I just, I'm not. Boom Boom Room is up there with one of my favorite songs from Roddy, let alone this album. The line where he talks about sliding in with a different car is mad and the beat for this song grabs your attention as soon as it starts. The music video is very cool, and if you like girls in bikinis, you'll like it too. I'm sliding the road, sliding in the lamb, sliding in the bin. Next up, there's a, a strange skit, but I understand it because it nicely brings you on to the next song, which is the second collaboration between DJ Mustard and Roddy Rich. High fashion shows a very similar sort of theme and style to Ballin', 
and it is pretty much the perfect sequel. It flows very well, and just like Ballin', it's another one of them catchy bangers. This brings us nicely onto the first song that I took a liking to. Since then, I've had many favourites, but the song possesses a very chilled out flow and a class fitting feature in Thai dollar sign. The song is different to the typical come up type of song and talks about more sexually explicit material, which works well with the feature. This song is followed by Roll Dice, which is more of an album filler, a very good song, but not as noticeable as the rest of the standout songs on the album. So now we have something completely different from Roddy Rich, and it's his most underrated song by a long way. Prayers to the Trap God is the first proper slow song we've ever had from Roddy Rich, and it's way more deep and way more meaningful than a lot of his stuff. It basically tells a story of his of his whole life, his whole previous life, um, but it's done in such a beautiful way. I really, really, really hope we hear more songs like this from Roddy Rich in the future. Heart beating my mind, raising up. You can hear the screams and sirens in the cut. The penultimate song on the album has the best feature on the project. A Boogie makes Tiptoe an absolute banger. The way he switches up his flow and shows this in the music video is insane. Not forgetting Roddy's outstanding wordplay with this line. She looking at the paddy like some skittle. Her hubby been talking tough, I turn to widow. This track is one of the best on the album and sets the album up for its last track superbly. One of the many reasons as to why this album is just so special is Rich blesses us with another slow song, his second of all time. War Baby is one of the best songs I have ever heard and it's probably my second favourite Roddy Rich song of all time, but for a completely different reason. You can really feel the emotion and passion that went into making this song and the choir at the end adds a very different style and at first I actually didn't like it but now it's one of the best parts of the song, it's what makes it so special. It's so different, it's so unique but it hits you in the feels. I'm from the bottom of the bottom, check your sources baby. On a whole, this album did not disappoint one single bit. It's the best album that's been released in the last year or so for sure. And it's still the best selling album in 2020, even though it was dropped last year and is gaining Roddy well-deserved recognition. For a debut album, it's incredible. And it makes me so much more excited for his next projects to see how good they can become. Like I said, I genuinely think this is one of the best albums I've ever heard. It holds many of my favorite songs and I'll be listening to most of the songs on this album for years and years. And for Roddy as an artist, it shows how far he's come, how much more diverse he's become over time and the true ability that he has. But what I love about it is it still keeps his core values, the core topics that he talks about and his core style. The hard gangster shit is still there. It's not through the whole project, but it's still there. And that reminds me of what X did and it really, really works for new fans and old fans. This album flew to the top of the billboard, is now certified platinum, and has left a huge mark on the rap game. The hard work he puts in has also been noticed as he has been nominated for three Grammy Awards. Now the title of the album did actually become a talking point in a lot of interviews as people struggle to understand how an artist in the public eye can deem themselves as antisocial. My question, can an artist be antisocial and still be an artist when the whole point of being an artist is being social? Yeah, for sure, okay. I feel like I feel like you you so you know I it's not that I'm so much anti I, I'm I'm anti-social but it's like it's only to people who don't understand or don't like know me like I'm not about to just walk up to you know people you don't know be like oh what's up man yeah yeah I ain't with all that shit mm. man. <laughs> and this is a really interesting part of Roddy Rich's personality as he claims he's a completely closed book to new people which is something I can certainly identify with something you'll notice in his earlier interviews. Roddy has a bit of a front up because of his experiences in the past. He can be very blunt in his answers and almost seems like he doesn't want to be there. However, this isn't because he's rude. It's the effect that the transition of not being known to having all the attention and people being fake using him for personal gain has on you. Growing up in a hood like Roderick Moore did will always leave people with that stone cold exterior. But as time goes by, he's becoming slowly but surely more open and more relaxed in a lot of his interviews. Got Roddy Rich. What's going on, man? With your champ. Your new album came out about three days ago. Yeah. Sorry for being anti-social. How does it feel to have your debut out? I feel like I've been I've been waiting for a minute to just give my fans some a little like update on mm -hmm. me. Rich is currently riding high on his music success. However, he doesn't plan to do it forever. He has one eye on the future, and as he gets older, he plans to do what other rappers such as Jay-Z and Dr. Dre have done and get into business to support his family forever. Once I get to a certain point. I really just want to just be having so much money that, you know, I don't really got to chase it as much and I mm -hmm. can really just sit back and, and make the proper business moves to 
create generational wealth. Mm -hmm. That's really what I what I envision myself doing now. What life holds, nobody knows, mm -hmm. you know. But like I said, just getting into different businesses and. You know, expanding my portfolio. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we can look forward to many more incredible music releases from Roddy Rich. He's far from finished yet, and to be honest, the main part of his career has only just begun. We don't have an exact idea of when new music is coming, but he has teased so many songs on Instagram Lives and Instagram Stories. And what we've heard so far is nothing from the typical Roddy Rich fucking quality. <laughs> Roddy's teased the potential of a more emotional type album, which is super exciting for me because I connect with that style of music. When I was broke, my members left me for some Fendi. Once I got rich, you screaming, Roddy, please forgive me. All this pain inside my body, I lock myself inside the room, but I ain't crying. I can cry, but if I ever said a bitch ain't make my heart cold, nigga, I'd be lying. But I can't lie, bro. And you know when I, that's my son, that's my son, that's my son, that's my son. So overall, I've made it pretty clear that Roddy Rich is one of my favourite artists of all time, and he is certainly my favourite artist right now. I think his lyrical ability is absolutely phenomenal and he's just flowing with raw talent he really is a special guy in the industry similar to adam roddy rich has been one of my favorite artists for a number of years and it's so nice to see him being appreciated and gaining well-deserved recognition he is one of the most talented rappers of his generation displays great versatility and has proved this with his latest album that he is here to stay and show the world what he can do as a kid or as a son my job it's to share my experiences with you. Mm -hmm. And whatever I could do to help you, that's what I was supposed to do. As family, period. I could teach my grandfather something right now. Yeah. And he three times my age. Right. Yeah. Because it could be somebody 10 years old that had to go through a million things in them yeah. 10 years. I never even had to touch mm -hmm. during these 21. It could be a two-year-old that teach you something, bro. Yeah, for sure. I was broke, now I'm rich, these niggas. LA, I motherfucking love y'all and I appreciate y'all for coming out.